wide receiver is the most difficult position to evaluate. Heck, if you don't believe me, ask NFL teams from the past five draft classes who have spent first round picks with just about nothing to show for it. Why are college receivers such challenging evaluations for NFL front offices? The answer is the vast range of abilities, styles, and versatility required to excel at the next level. Teams are often guilty of drafting a particular player with a particular body type to play a particular role. But Alabama wide receiver Jerry Judy isn't any one style of receiver. His game is built on versatility across every aspect of the position. Judy can use his 6'1", 193-pound frame to body up defensive backs and press coverage, sizzle past safeties over the top with every bit of his 4'4'5 speed, and use his wide variety of releases and jaw-dropping route-running agility from the slot to win in tight areas. His shiftiness and ability to create space both before and after the catch are exceptionally rare qualities. He can both widen and lengthen the field from any position, and he's proven he can excel in both Michael Loxley's vertical spread scheme, which bombs defenses downfield, and Steve Sarkeesian's quick-paced, West Coast style where Judy routinely took 7-yard slants 60 yards to the house. He dominated both as a flanker outside as well as a slot receiver inside, and has proven he will win wherever you position him on the field. He is the most advanced, polished route runner of the past several years, possesses multiple plans of attack to defeat press coverage, and has a fluid understanding of the soft spots and zone coverage. Many of his biggest plays came in high-pressure third and long situations. It was evident how both the Alabama coaching staff and quarterback Tua Tungavailoa trusted him to run polished NFL-style routes, some of them so advanced most NFL receivers wouldn't even dare to attempt. Several times against LSU, Judy ran a blaze-out route, which is reserved for the elite of the elite. Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, and Keenan Allen. A blaze-out route is similar to a post corner, but instead of aiming for the corner, the receiver breaks flat outside at a 90-degree angle. It's a very difficult route to run, because it requires the receiver to full speed, drop all of his weight, and cut in the complete opposite direction. When it's run incorrectly and the angle outside isn't flat enough, the defensive back can undercut the route and intercept the pass. LSU brings a five-man fire zone blitz, which leaves Judy one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback and a safety over the top. Tua recognizes the blitz and immediately turns to Judy, trusting he'll win on the blazeout route. If he can't gain separation, Tua won't have time to find his second read due to the extra pressure. Judy speed releases to seven yards, then sells post for a quick three. To make this route work, he has to fully commit his eyes, shoulders, and hips inside to turn the corner away from the sideline. Because Judy is using all of his 4-4 speed, that corner has to respect the post cutting across the field. What's so difficult about running the blaze out is this sharp turn. Most receivers will either slow down to make sure they get flat enough outside, won't sell the post hard enough with their upper body, or won't fully commit their lower half, which tips off the cornerback where they're going. Watch Judy's hips as he snaps them down. They drop and sink to the floor while he brings his chin to his knee, which absorbs all the speed he's accumulated, stops his momentum, and creates an angle for him to cut on a dime. Your hips need to fire out of the break. As he's flipping them, he stays low to the ground so he can explode towards the side line. He separates about 4-5 to five yards away from the defender and sprints downfield to pick up yards after the catch. With his speed and impressive route running acumen, defenses will usually turn to press coverage to delay his release and interrupt the timing and pacing of his routes. Press coverage is often detrimental for most college receivers coming into the pros, because college defenses don't play much press, and if they do, it's usually not very good. Even for advanced route runners entering the NFL, oftentimes they will struggle when dealing with bigger, more athletic defenders who jam them at the line. In addition to route running, a diverse arsenal of releases at the line of scrimmage and ability to set cornerbacks up throughout the game are imperative to success at the next level. Considering Judy's play style and somewhat slender frame, it would make sense that he would struggle with this type of coverage. But Judy has those abilities and understands the intricacies and nuances of defeating corners pressing him at the line. In the third quarter, South Carolina aligned 6'4", 205-pound cornerback Israel Mukwamu head up on Judy. Every receiver needs a plan before each and every snap. You must properly release off the ball and create separation at the stem of your route while tracking the corner's reaction to that route to use as a counter later in the game. 
Initially, Judy doesn't see the ball as it's snapped and gets a slow start off the line of scrimmage. Though this is advantage Mukwamu, he slowly starts to lean forward. Judy uses a type of press release called a single move, where he sticks his foot in the opposite direction of his route and gives a hard head fake, then bursts back outside. Not only does he sell that head fake inside, he uses his shoulders as well. When Mukwamu throws his arm out to jam him, Judy dodges that move, then explodes out of his stance. He's created immediate separation, but he can't just sprint straight to his target point. Defenders are too good and too quick to recover, so he has to use an additional move to create uncertainty. He sells his route vertical to force Mukwamu upfield, then uses a speed cut and puts his left foot in the ground. Check out how he flashes his eyes to the inside to sell the route just that extra little bit. Since Mukwamu is out of phase and trying to gain ground to keep up, that extra sell forces him upfield just a step and keeps him off balance. Judy could fire out of his speed cut a little bit quicker, but with the sideline so close, he has to maintain enough room for Tua to fit in the throw. The ball is perfectly placed, and Judy makes a textbook catch away from his frame with great extension. Great receivers don't master just one release, or else defensive backs will cheat and leverage to that same side every time. Receivers like Judy use multiple releases, and counter off of moves they've set up earlier. Now in the fourth quarter, Judy lines up once again with Mukwamu in man coverage. On Judy's single release, he went opposite of his initial movement. He knows Mukwamu is sitting on that single release he just saw, so Judy uses his double release to create separation. The double release puts the outside foot in the ground while squaring the corner up. With Mukwamu prepared to bite on the second move, Judy gives him just that with a hard sell inside, then releases out. Mukwamu overextends that side, and as Judy releases out, he sinks his shoulder in anticipation of the jam. It doesn't come right away, but Mukwamu throws that right arm to slow Judy's burst and keep him from flying upfield. Judy uses patience and anticipation. He doesn't swipe at Mukwamu's arm until he sees it. He uses a chop move to disengage and get further upfield. This causes Mukwamu to lean harder to cut off the angle so he doesn't get beat deep, but it throws him off balance. Judy is not all finesse. He uses a throw-by or push-by technique to punish that lean and sends Mukwamu flying. Every little inch plays a part in the equation. Judy not only uses his physicality, but his mind to gain an extra advantage and create extra separation. When he pairs the mental aspect with his excellent vision, that's when you get a true football player and not just a freak athlete. Quarterbacks and receivers must see the defense through the same set of eyes and process information together in a split second. Whether Judy is being pressed, in the slot, man coverage, or zone coverage, he understands the positioning of the defense and anticipates the holes in coverage. An example of that came against Mississippi State. Alabama has a Haas concept on the left, which is a hitch route from the outside receiver with Judy running a seam read which starts as a seam route, but adjusts to the coverage during the play. For example, if it's cover 3 zone and there's a middle of the field safety, Judy will run the seam and attack straight ahead. If it's cover 2 zone and the middle of the field is open, he will convert his route to a post and bend towards that empty space. It's a difficult route to run. Judy has to be quick and decisive so Tua knows they're on the same page, while simultaneously being patient enough so the defense won't see his intention and cut off his path. At the snap, the defense shifts into Tampa cover 2 zone with a cat blitz. Tampa 2 is two safeties deep and linebacker Errol Thompson covering the deep middle hole. Judy uses his speed release off the line of scrimmage and sees that strong safety rotate to the deep half. If he bends his route immediately, Thompson will wall him off and slow down his route, so Judy slightly bananas out to maintain that distance, and the moment he knows he can get around Thompson, he begins to cut inside. He has to slightly adjust to the ball while maintaining his speed to outrun Thompson and remain cognizant of the safeties closing in. Once again, with pressure coming, Tua trusts him to make the right read, when downfield and make the catch to continue the drive. One quarter later, Alabama is threatening the red zone. Not only do receivers need a deep understanding of zone coverages and their weaknesses, but how to leverage those weaknesses when the play goes off script. 
Just like the previous play, Mississippi State is playing Tampa 2 zone, only this time it's a little different. Instead of bringing the cat pressure, or any pressure, they only rush 3 and drop 8. They want to flood the underneath coverage to eliminate any of Alabama's quick hitting concepts while protecting the deep part of the field. The flanked receiver has a fade on the outside, which usually works against a cover 2 zone defense, and on the other side, a drive concept from a stacked alignment with Judy on the line of scrimmage. The drive concept is a dig or basic route that will cut inside usually around 12 yards downfield with a shallow drag underneath. Drive is a bad concept against Tampa 2 zone, because the middle hole linebacker, again Errol Thompson, will turn to the strong side of the formation and is in perfect position to cut off the dig while the five defenders underneath can neutralize the shallow drag. Thompson remembers just a quarter ago when Judy saw this exact look and converted his seam route to torch Tampa 2's open space deep, so instead of matching Judy's route, Thompson puts his head down and sprints to that spot to make sure it doesn't happen again. To his first read is the fade which he doesn't like, and when he feels pressure at the top of his drop, he starts to move out of the pocket. Judy sees that Thompson is running to the deep hole and identifies the flooded coverage underneath. He knows his dig route has no chance to come open. Tua knows this as well, so he scrambles out of the pocket. When Judy sees Tua buying time, he nestles down in the open area behind the linebackers and in front of Thompson. He understands the spacing of the defense and where that small, soft spot is in the zone coverage. Tua throws on the run, but fails to properly put the ball on Judy's backside shoulder. He uses his body to shield the ball away from Thompson and make sure he secures the catch. Judy has so many desirable traits that will translate day one. While he is polished and appears ready to dominate NFL defenses from the jump, there are several areas where he still needs to improve. While he makes impressive catches outside of his frame, he will occasionally take his eye off the ball, which leads to concentration drops on easy passes. His drop rate in college was pretty high at 8.3%, which has to improve for him to succeed at the next level. He is a bit wiry, kinda lanky, and relatively slim. If he wants to be an X receiver and line up on the line of scrimmage every play, he'll need to bulk up a bit to punish teams who try and use press coverage. When he's blocking in the running game or on a screen, that weight disadvantage will pop up here and there, but it's nothing too worrisome. Because he's such a young prospect, I project him to put on weight and add size to his frame to the point where it probably won't be an issue. The versatility in his diverse skill set is mouth-watering for every organization, and I think a coach who values that versatility and can move him up and down the formation will ultimately maximize his vast potential. <coughs> Kyle Shanahan Jerry Judy has such a rare ability to vary his releases, run every route in and out of the route tree, and process multiple coverages on the fly. He is right now ready to terrorize the NFL. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. My voice is finally back. I don't know, maybe you guys can tell it's still kind of messed up, and some of you are probably confused and wondering why the hell the voiceover is different like every other week, and I'm really sorry for that. I've wanted to do these videos so badly, and I really appreciate you guys for sticking with me week in and week out. If you enjoy this channel and want to support its growth, you should check out my Patreon page. You'll unlock exclusive access to my play breakdowns, articles, videos, and more. I just got my hands on Mike McCarthy's 2012 playbook from his time in Green Bay, and I've been posting a few of those plays on the page. It's surprising his playbook is so complicated when really he has the reputation of a coach with a stale offense until he got canned with the Packers. So if that interests you, check out the Patreon page and make sure to look for next week's episode, most likely on Wisconsin running back Jonathan Taylor, who looks like an absolute dude from what I've seen so far. And if there's a prospect you want me to break down, just leave a comment down below. Alright, that's gonna do it. Until next Saturday, see ya!